What it do, fam? It's your man, Shawnee Mo, coming to you from the Pistachio Factory. Uh, my last video was titled The Way I See It, and I did say at the end of the video that there would be a part two. Now, if my memory uh, uh, serves me correctly, I was in the process of talking about why uh, black money is not spent in black communities. Um, and, and why black businesses don't succeed in black communities. Um, and, and I want to pick up from right there, if at all possible. A while back, I had a discussion on the telephone with, uh, with the client. In the middle of this discussion, actually it wasn't even a discussion, um, I had I had some things that I had to take care of uh, personally, you know, as a husband and a father, um, and in the middle of handling that business, I received a phone call from a client. Um, I could not talk to that client at the moment, and you know, I was like, I'll, I'll touch base with you later. I couldn't even get in the door fast enough um, before the client called me here at home and we're talking in access of maybe two three hours later um, long story short uh, the client and I had a massive blow up on the phone um, that particular blow up trickled into another phone conversation the following day which ended up in a blow up but in the midst of that conversation in the midst of that second phone call that next day um, there was a comment that was made and you know hopefully this video won't get deleted or removed by YouTube because it's just going to be straight and to the point but there was a comment made and the individual that 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 I had to blow up with made the comment real simply put I'm not trying to do no more nigga business and it's that that just really stuck with me, you know. Um, I wasn't offended. It, it stuck with me to the point where I needed to. It was something that I needed to think on. And the other day, I had happened to be watching Malcolm X. Now this wasn't the first time that I saw the movie, but it was the first time I saw the movie. Um, when the when I first saw Malcolm X, you know. I was in that pro-black mindset, but not fully, you know, it, it was more, okay, this is a new Spike Lee movie, it's about Malcolm X, let me check it out. The second time around that I watched the movie, I saw the movie, and there were some things that I recognized, you know, and, and, and when you're talking about depicting one story who's not here to really give you the full information. You know, they, they try, some people try their best to give you their lives on screen. And um, big ups to Spike Lee and, and Denzel for, for a phenomenal job, no doubt. But when I watched this movie, <clears throat> I started to pay attention to what I was seeing, what I was hearing, how I was feeling, what I was thinking, how it applied to me today. And, you know, the one thing, the one part of the movie that really, really stuck with me was the part where Brother Malcolm decided at some point he needed to disconnect himself from the nation of Islam. Not only did he realize that he needed to disconnect himself from the nation of Islam, but he also felt this burning desire to try to reconnect with himself spiritually, mentally, emotionally. He was he was on this self-enlightenment journey and he did what he had to do 
to make that happen. And when he came back, the things that he discovered because of the position that he was in, he felt it was his duty to share it with the people. Now, I want to kind of sort of stay right in that particular area of self-awareness and, 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 and self-journeys and, and self-enlightenment. Like I said in my previous video, the year is coming to an end and there's been a lot of things going on. A lot of things happening. Um, and, and, you know, some of us are paying attention to it and some of us aren't. One of the things that I'm paying attention to the most is the economy, the stock market, you know, how, how a decision is made um, on a financial side and how it affects the people, how it affects a business. Um, and when this brother, you know, when this brother made this comment, you know, that I'm not trying to do any more nigga business. Everything just came together, you know, um, what, what, what I saw as far as Brother Malcolm was trying to do in, in connection to nigga business. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm really trying to be as professional about this, but in a way I'm feeling like the gloves need to just come off. Um, and, and part of the reason why our businesses don't succeed is because it's a lot of people doing a lot of nigga business. Now, what is a nigga business? A nigga business is a business that's ran by an ignorant person, and it doesn't matter what color you are. Um, a nigga business is a business where the individual has no love or respect for the people that make up the business. Um, a nigga business is a business that they're not really out for, for customer service. They're only out to get customer money. They don't really care about whether the service was good, bad, or not. Um, they just want the money. A nigga business will come in today and be gone tomorrow. Um, a nigga business has many, many staff disagreements and problems and the one in charge really doesn't care about the problems really don't want to resolve the problems instead what they want to do is kind of sort of brush it under the carpet and act like it never happened because all they care about is the money um, a nigga business is, is just it's just one of those things where um, you don't you don't want to a nigga business will never succeed because it does not encompass the elements to make a successful business and when you stop and think about that a lot of cats are running nigga businesses today um, nigga businesses exploit people they don't help people they exploit it nigga businesses only come in when it's time for a photo op or a tax write-off but then you never hear from them again afterwards a nigga business is very selective who they donate to, who they give to. A nigga business will take advantage of people's talents and skills and act like that they're in debt to them. That person is in debt to the business versus the business being in debt to the person for helping to make the business what it is. I could go on for days. But when I think about the move that Brother Malcolm made, and this is nothing against the nation of Islam, but we're just talking about the dynamic of business. You know, it got to a point where folks was looking at him and they were outright hating on him because he was starting to open his, his eyes were starting to open up. And he felt this desire, you know, that my people need to understand the main reason why we aren't moving ahead. The problem ain't got nothing to do with the white man. The problem has something to do with us. We are not doing each other right. And once he discovered that and started to spread that word, they shut him down. They tried. They took him out. And it's funny because I looked at that and I thought about Martin Luther King. I thought about Kennedy, even though, you know, folks can say what they want to say about Kennedy. I thought about Kennedy. Um, I thought about a lot of people who, in their own way, became more aware of themselves and what their purpose in life was. And they begin to walk on a path where in order to be able to share something with somebody else, especially when it comes down to trying to help lift them up, 
the first thing that you have to do is you have to do the self-analysis thing and you got to start being honest with yourself about a lot of stuff now I'm going I'm going to say this because I've said it before and and I've said it numerous times and I'm gonna say it right now right here on camera you know part part of the part of the problem is we have gotten preached into this mindset where once you do this confessional thing you have to do it to someone else or you have to do it in a public setting and that's not necessarily true the first person that you have to start admitting stuff to is yourself you know and if you owe someone an apology then fine you give that person the apology if you don't owe the apology but you know that there's something that needs to change within you for them to see that you're trying to go on a better path then that's what you have to do but when you're dealing with nigger businesses they don't care about any of that all they care about is themselves and it, it saddens me because you're seeing a lot of cats die over money and over nothing you know over nigger business and and it's not fair because we talk about the next generation we talk about trying to help our children when technically we can't even begin to help ourselves now I go back to my situation at hand like I said, I only do this two times a year. It's before my birthday and before the end of the year. And there are times when we offer of instinct, make moves, and then later on realize maybe some of those moves were not for the betterment of what it was that we were trying to do. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you hate a person. It doesn't mean that you dislike a person. It just means that you've taken a look at the bigger picture and you see that your involvement does not show you or have you feel like maybe just maybe this is what I need to move forward it doesn't give you that feeling like yeah, if I stick with it I'm going to move ahead and this is my case you know as the year is coming to an end I've taken a look at my involvement in quite a few things I've made some decisions to make some changes in some places because I openly admit that I have been involved in nigga business myself and at some point in order for me to really succeed because for the last three or four years every time I got halfway there I get myself involved in something that ultimately ends up not really being in my best interest and I end up having to start all over again well I made a promise to myself not a resolution but a promise that you know I'm going to do what I need to do in order to see myself become successful that includes surrounding myself with like-minded people it means really taking evaluation of what I'm getting myself involved in before I commit to it now what's funny is that some of the things that I've been involved to prior to me in this particular place that I'm at right now I started off doing it out of the kindness of my heart because I was going to try to feel I wanted to fill a need you know um, not for self but just because I believe in helping someone else out so if I have it I'm gonna pass it on or try to share it with somebody else I've always been that way that's the way my folks raised me but in the end I start to realize that this this gesture from the kindness of my heart has now been taken you know out of content and out of context and you you start to get a lot of verbal promises that are basically empty um, you know like I think I said it in the last video where you have certain people who give and then when they give you they are always quick to remind you that they gave you um, and to me that sounds it makes me feel like you know you didn't really give it from your heart you just gave it to kind of sort of do it for you you were doing it for self you weren't doing it for the sheer purpose of, of, of out of the kindness of your heart and you know just like I can question you know just like I'm being questioned I can question too but you look at that and and the reason why financially our communities don't really succeed like they should as far as having black owned businesses in black communities is because there are more grinders than there are hustlers um, I posted it on my Facebook page to me 
A hustler is a cat that's going to survey his surroundings and kind of plan where he fits into the grand scheme of things. He's going to come in. He's going to do what he got to do, make his money. And he's not going to pack up and leave. What he's going to do is he's going to turn over more. He's going to get more product to, to make more profit. And then he's going to expand his business. A cat that does his grind doesn't survey his surroundings, doesn't have any plans. They just come in, they get it, and they roll out, and they don't care who it affects. That's nigga business, you know. And I look at I look at the moves that I have made, and I look at the moves that I want to make. And I can honestly say, you know, from the way that I see it, our biggest failure is the fact that there are too many niggas doing nigga business. You know, and once again, that does not necessarily mean just a black person. To me, a nigga ain't just a group of sticks. It's also an ignorant individual, clearly across the board. But I know for a fact that what Brother Malcolm tried to do was enlighten our people. And part of accepting the enlightenment is accepting the truth. And part of accepting the truth is being able to look at oneself and accept the fact that maybe there's some things that, you know, about you that you need to change. Maybe there's some things about you that you need to do different. You know, it's funny because we, we, we whined and cried when Obama was running for office about change. But as I look around me, a lot of us didn't want to accept the change. A lot of us reverted right back to the old stuff again. And I mean, me personally, a lot of the old stuff has something to do with doing nigga business. I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily mean an establishment. It, it could be how you deal with people. It could be how you deal with your home, how you deal with your relationships. You know, it, it, it encompasses all of that. But a lot of us reverted back to that. And for the record, I don't want to be a part of that anymore. I want to be a part of the solution and not the problem. Being part of the solution means that I have to be a lot more aware of what I get myself involved in once again. Being part of the solution means that I'm going to not exploit my people for what I can get from them. You know, I want to genuinely and honestly be someone who is known to be a person that wants to help an individual. And if if we had more people of that mindset and that ideology, I think, you know, especially in our communities, this world would be a better place. You know, no one said that the truth is supposed to taste sweet and it's supposed to go down easy, especially when it comes to dealing with oneself. It's never easy because when you finally get to a point in a place where you're sick and tired of butting your head up against the wall, the first thing that you have to do is you have to look at yourself. Once again, where you need to correct certain things and apologize to certain people, that is what is required. You know, you must do that. But if it's not required, you don't have to stand in front of a congregation and give your life story just to say that you realize it's time for you to make a change for your personal life and your personal self. You don't have to do that. And, and, and we need to start letting folks know that because for real, if I'm speaking with you and you know that there's some things that maybe you don't feel good about internally, Unless you're actually, unless you actually feel this need to really let me know, to be honest with you, I want you to take care of that internally and, and just keep it moving. You know, handle your business and keep it moving. You don't have to tell me. You know, if you want to, that's fine, but you don't have to tell me. Um, and, and I think, you know, that's what, that's a practice that we need to start getting down with because if you if you look at a lot of things that are being discussed, people are making speculation on things that they have no information on. I try to I try to be as honest as I can 
with with anybody and everybody that I come in contact with. But I don't necessarily have to let them know everything that I'm thinking and feeling about myself. I can just say, well, it's just some things that I know internally I need to correct and then and, and I'm gonna take care of that business. But in the grand scheme of things, this is why we don't see the things that we talk about wanting to see. This is why the future looks so bleak for our children, because we need to really stop and evaluate the business that we doing. We need to stop doing the nigga business and start handling the real business. Because when you think about it, everybody is everybody has the same goal, and that's to succeed. Everybody wants to eat. Everybody wants to be able to live comfortably and take care of what they need to take care of. Me, I have a family, I'm a husband, I'm a brother, and I'm a friend. And I've made a commitment to a lot of people, and I truly do intend on being loyal to those people. And in, and, and part of my being loyal is making sure that I'm able to take care of them the best way that I possibly can. So if it means that I got to stop doing one thing to take care of some, some real personal business, then that's what I have to do. That's real business. That's not nigga business. Marinate on that, and I'll get back at you.